In this video, I discuss five apps that I cannot live without on my iPhone. Do you know about them all? Check it out right now. The first app is the Net Newswire Public Beta. So Net Newswire is of course the legendary RSS client for the Mac. It is now available as a public beta for iOS from its original developer and that's super exciting. The reason why I really like this app is because it's simple. It's easy to use, it's very intuitive. The animations are nicely done and the application is fast. It isn't bogged down with a whole bunch of unnecessary features. I mean, RSS at the end of the day is about catching up with the latest news and this app allows you to do just that. But there are also plenty of additional features to be found. Of course, you can long press on feeds and have all sorts of options there. You can move feeds around to different folders. Uh, you can rename feeds. So let's go into the reader view for 9to5Mac. So you see all the articles there, tap on an article, skip to the next article, go back to the previous. And swipe gestures are of course fully implemented there, as you can see. And when you wanna add a feed, you just tap the plus button at the bottom of the interface. You don't have to dig into the settings. You just tap the plus button, put the URL in, give it a name, move it to the right folder if you want to do that. You can also go in and sync with Feedbin or Feedly, or you can just have it local on your device. And I should mention, of course, there is a Mac application, so you can sync between your Mac, your iPhone, your iPad. And of course it supports iOS 13's dark mode. So you can switch between light and dark, just like that. And with a quick tap of the button in the upper right hand corner, you can display only the unread items in your list. And you can also, if you tap one of the headers, that will display all the articles within that folder. So for instance, if I tap, let's see here, if I tap tech, find tech here, it'll show all the articles within tech. Now, something else that's really useful is search. So you can search in the current folder or you can search all articles if you want to. So I'm gonna just search for coronavirus. And there we go. So I can search that current folder or I can just tap all articles and it will search all the articles across all of the folders. And on the home screen, there is a quick action shortcut if you wanna quickly get to certain sections of the app. Folks, it is Net Newswire in public beta right now. Check the link down below in the description for more details. Next on my list is Apollo. So Apollo is by far my favorite Reddit client for iOS. And the reason why that is, is because it is just inundated with tons of options. It is like, we just talked about how simple Net Newswire was and how much I appreciated that. Well, for, for Reddit, I appreciate having tons of different customization options and this app has it in spades. I mean, you can customize everything from the theme to the app icon. You can have filters and filter out certain subreddits, filter out users. Uh, that you don't want to hear from. You also have all these different swipe gestures that you can go in and customize. So if I want to change a left short swipe from upvote to hide, I can do just that. That is what makes this app so impressive, just the sheer amount of customization. Also, what I love is the ability to quickly jump to a favorite subreddit right there from the home screen using the quick action shortcuts. And there's that, that gesture that we just implemented to hide just a second ago. But another thing that's cool is you can quickly sort and you can quickly jump to your other favorites just by tapping the little button at the top. And of course you can search. There's just so much here. And if you use Reddit at all, you definitely wanna check out Apollo. Next up is none other than Things 3 for the iPhone. Folks, I could probably make a video every single week about things and have 52 videos at the end of the year. That is how deep this application is. There's just so much here, but let me show you one of the reasons why I love this app, the ability to quickly search using Quick Find. So you can just pull down on the app, put your search term in, perform your search. It highlights where it found your search term and there you go. So now I can just jump right in there, add a list right there on the fly. So I'm gonna add a quick checklist, compressor. See, let's spell that right. <laughs> And let's see, what else can we add here? How about screen flow? And of course, motion. And let's add post slab. All right, so that's really cool. So you can also add notes. So if I wanna add a note to this particular item, which is in this project, then I can do that. So I'm just gonna say these are apps 
that I need to, wow, my spelling's horrible, cover. There we go. Another cool thing is you can quickly sort your list items here. You just drag like that. There's just so many ways you can customize this application. You can set a deadline for this particular item. So let's just say it's due on the first. I think we're good. You can even go in and add tags if you want to do that. So things is the application that I use for basically my life, like to stay organized without this application, I would be absolutely lost. <laughs> so here's another little cool tip. The reason why I like this app, if you hold the plus button there, you can drag that directly where you want it in your list of items. So if I want it right after the first item, I just drop it there and there my new to do is created and I can just start typing. That is so nice to have, especially if you're trying to stay organized, you're working on getting things done. This is just one of the many reasons why I love things. You can do the same thing when adding a new project as well. Just simply tap and drag. Let's go ahead and delete that test project. So folks, it is things, it's 10 bucks for the iPhone. This is probably the one app that I couldn't live without on iOS. Next up is Guardian. So Guardian is a VPN and a firewall utility for iOS. And what it basically does is it encrypts traffic information between your iPhone and Guardian's VPN servers. But not just that, for subscribers, network traffic is then filtered via the firewall. So that's gonna block digital data and location trackers from secretly harvesting all of your data. So you can see that VPN is connected there. And the nice thing about this, if you are a subscriber, then you get persistent VPN connectivity. So even if you lose your internet connection, you reconnect, the VPN will automatically on demand connect. So it keeps you protected. It blocks those data trackers, as you can see there, the location trackers. And even if you're just on the free tier, you can at least get a look and see what type of location or data trackers or page hijackers or mail trackers. The free tier will give you a good idea of what you're up against you may be surprised by the seemingly benign apps out there like weather apps for instance free weather apps that have all these trackers built in and to be fair most of these probably aren't doing anything necessarily nefarious with your data i don't want to be like try to scare people or anything like that but a lot of times they're using that for advertising but sometimes it's not just for advertising sometimes there really are like bad actors out there that are doing bad things with your data uh, so this application, at least you can go out and see what type of trackers are out there. So it's very, very great application. Uh, the paid tier is also very nice because it persistently stays connected to the VPN. Let me show you what I mean here. So if I disconnect, go into airplane mode, you see the VPN disconnects, but you'll see it automatically on demand reconnect just like that. That's one of the benefits of the paid subscription. The fifth and final app on our list is Robinhood. Now, I wouldn't say I am like super serious about the stock market, but I do like checking it out from time to time. And I will, you know, invest a little bit here and there, but it's nothing serious. And for me, an app like Robinhood is ideal because I'm a small time investor, obviously. The app is great because it has all sorts of historical data. It has news information so you can keep up with the latest ongoings with the stocks you're interested in. There's research, there's all sorts of stuff out there. But the real big thing about this application is not just that there's lots of data out there, but that it's commission free, which is important for like smaller investors or those that are just dipping their toes in the water. You can go out there, place an order commission free, which is really cool. So say I wanted to buy one share of Tesla stock, I could do that. So let's go ahead and just put in one and we'll just place a normal market order. So there you go. You see the estimated cost. You see there are no commission fees involved. It is really simple, super simple and super easy. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dogs and cats, I hope you enjoyed this video showcasing five of my must have iPhone applications. I'm interested to hear your feedback. Do you know them all? Have you used them all? Do you currently use them? Let me know down below in the comments section with your thoughts and thumbs up and subscribe if you appreciate videos like this. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.